Hi, uh, in this video, I'm going to talk briefly about Apache Flink complex event processing. Uh, my talk will be divided into three main topics. First part, first part I'm going to go quickly through the uh, concept of complex event processing and uh, talk about Apache Flink. Well, uh, we will see how it fits inside the big data zoo and obviously try to contrast it from uh, Apache Spark, which is now creating all uh, all that marketing fluff. Lastly, uh, we'll uh, get down to the nuts and bolts of Flink API to demo uh, a pretty cool example of CEP. Complex event processing is the concept of continuously matching incoming events against a pattern. Uh, the result of uh, matching are usually more complex events um, which are derived or inferred from the uh, input events. And uh, it's called complex because we are looking across multiple asynchronous event streams. Plus the uh, types of patterns could be very complicated. CEP has a wide spectrum of applications, uh, but mostly in, uh, in like credit card fraud detection. I mentioned here uh, uh, the uh, Stockholm congestion traffic uh, tax based on time of day. It's called the trunks, uh, whatever. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's pretty cool example. If you wanna, if you don't mind, uh, have a look at the Wikipedia link about. Um, uh, but all these applications have something in common. Uh, they deal with a huge volume of events, but you know only a few of are of real interest. Individual events are usually not, not important, but the composition and aggregation, uh, this is the uh, most important. So uh, what do I need? Uh, what are the ingredients of uh, a CEP? You know, for some applications, uh, a single second could make the difference between loss and gain or death and life. So we need that technology uh, that can produce outputs very fast. Uh, it supports complex event patterns based on temporal and spatial relationship. It, it, it scales up to millions of events per second. We need, in reality, something called real-time streaming analytics framework. and uh, Today we see Flink, the squirrel, uh, which is one of these. So what is Flink? Flink uh, project started with the name of Stratosphere in Germany. Uh, it was approved for Apache Incubator in March 2014, and just uh, eight months later it bubbled up as uh, uh, an Apache top-level project and named Flink. Flink is the squirrel, you know. This would be an additional animal in the zoo of Hadoop ecosystem. I'm quoting from their website. Apache Flink is an open source platform for distributed stream and batch data processing. Okay, this sounds like a deja vu, right? It looks like uh, yet another Spark implementation from a different part of the world. I truly believe that Flink is to be considered the next generation of multiple multi-purpose big data analytics frameworks. But how, how is, is this relevant to being the next generation? Uh, in fact, streaming is considered to be uh, the next programming paradigm for data application. That, that's a very natural way of thinking. Data is flowing between systems and each system would process it and somehow augment it and pass it to uh, other systems. Uh, there is no time or uh, even need to store data with all these uh, wearables and uh, Internet of Things. This table uh, summarizes uh, the main differences between the three major streaming engines to date, uh, Storm, Spark, and Flink. Uh, from, from streaming point of view, Spark cannot be considered a true real-time streaming engine, you know, simply because it was not built for, uh, for, for real-time. It was built for batch processing, so streaming is a special case uh, using micro batches, uh, while on the other hand, true uh, real time processing uh, is one at a time processing model. So data is ingested uh, 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 as soon as it arrives with the subsequent uh, latest. Um, for, for delivery and fault tolerance, Storm has to keep track of each and every record. This is done with the concept of at least once delivery semantics, uh, while in Spark and Flink, uh, they both use what is called exactly once. Uh, messages are never lost and never delivered. Uh, one of the major differentiators between uh, Spark and Flink is the fact that Spark Flink supports time-based and record-based windowing, while Spark supports only time-based. I mean, th there's more differentiator to say here, but like Flink's memory manager, auto-tuner, also the built-in iterate and delta iterate support, uh, which is extremely important for machine learning or graph analysis applications. Uh, it brings a huge boost in performance. All right, um, so I think it's enough. We're not going to transform this into a debate, so uh, we'll stop here. This is the Apache Flink stack. 
you can uh, already see the at the bottom that we still have the same data sources streaming kafka uh, file systems local file system and uh, distributed uh, hadoop file system uh, and dbs like uh, mongodb flink can be deployed as local single jvm clustered using uh, yarn uh, or uh, or uh, in the cloud and then uh, flink includes several apis for creating applications that use this flink engine like the data stream api for unbounded streams which is embedded in java and scala uh, they have a data set api for static data uh, flink also bundles libraries on top of that for domain specific use cases like you know the uh, jelly uh, as a graph processing api the machine learning li library and the uh, uh, cep which is the complex event processing we, we are going to use today the flink cep uh, api will allow you to define complex event patterns uh, with the help of these functions in the table. We use the same method of chained calls, that means, for example, stream, dot, uh, begin, dot, next, dot, where, etc. But uh, there are a few rules to follow. This is how it's programmed. Uh, first, you define your data stream source um, uh, here. And then you create, uh, any, uh, this could be, for example, Kafka in our, in our example, and we'll see it later. Uh, create an, then create an event pattern uh, with the help of these uh, functions that we saw. Each pattern has to start with an initial state, right? Then a filter, right? You have to have a, a state, then a filter. Then you create with that, you create a pattern stream of events, and then uh, you implement this uh, uh, data stream from matched patterns. Okay, so this is the, your output is the data stream from filtered alarms. This is in general how, how it works. Uh, to demo uh, the use of Flink, uh, uh, I'm gonna do a patient monitoring system that will uh, trigger health alarms which indicate like if somebody has to be put under intensive care or not. I took advantage of the uh, MDCalc website to understand severity scores. I, I kept it fairly simple. The purpose here is to showcase how Flink uh, CEP could be used in real world applications. This is uh, my uh, design. I used Python Kafka producer to generate random numbers. I generate three measurements for each of the uh, 200 users. So about 600 messages per second. Um, my pattern is fairly simple. Uh, if I receive two heart rates of increasing severity and between them uh, one severe blood pressure reading, I trigger an alarm. All right, uh, I'm gonna leave off to the demo. Okay, first thing to do is you want to install Flink uh, as a local server. So uh, let's go ahead and check the, the download page. All right. So it requires a version of Scala and Hadoop. So it's, it's always a good practice to refresh my setup. Uh, th the last thing you wish to have is, you know, uh, hit the wall with incompatible stuff. So I'm going to use my Cloudera VM. Uh, so let's step in and verify my environment okay uh, you want to get a Java version first cool uh, so we have uh, 1.8 that means uh, I'll be able to run lambda functions what's my Scala version this is a bit tricky to have and by the way uh, Flink has a strong support of Scala because the core is written in Scala and Java okay so mine is 2.10.5 I want to know what's my Hadoop. Uh, it's not an obligation, but in case we want to use HDFS, for example. All right, so we have the 2.6 version. Okay, last thing I want to know is Kafka, which is already installed. So uh, I already have it in here, uh, slash op slash Kafka uh, version 9.0.1. So I'm going to go back into the web page and select this one. All right, I'm going to copy this link. And bring back the console and download it. Okay, I'm saving time here. Uh, it's already in there. So uh, now you want to unzip it somewhere. XLVF link inside slash up. Okay, I'm gonna go there and uh, and start it. I do that by executing uh, uh, as a sudo bin slash uh, start local dot sh. All right, uh, looks like Flink is started, but uh, I'm gonna check. One way is to go to uh, visit this website, Cloudera port 8081. 
This one is the uh, Apache Flink job manager. And we have, uh, uh, later on we can uh, we can see more in detail, but uh, you can see that the, the number of tasks running, tasks uh, completed, etc. Uh, here I have something odd. Uh, I have only one available task slot. So I'm going to go back and change this. Uh, the way to do it is to edit the file conf slash uh, flink dash conf dot yaml. Uh, I'm going to search for keyword um, task. All right, the number of task slots, I'm going to increase that to three, for example. I'm going to save, exit, and go ahead and stop, restart flink. Stop and start it again. Cool. Uh, let's check it out. All right. So now I have three tasks available for my uh, demo. Okay. So what's next? I mentioned earlier that uh, I'm gonna use Kafka for streaming. So you wanna start uh, Zookeeper and Kafka. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, step into Kafka folder. It's already installed there. I'm going to uh, start a uh, separate screen for Zookeeper and a separate one for Kafka because I don't want to have all these logs uh, in my console. Okay, and I'm going to start Zookeeper, exit from the console, and then create another one for Kafka and start it. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, detach from there and leave it. Now that we have Zookeeper and Kafka running, um, I'm going to create a new topic. Let's call it uh, demo CEP and uh, give it 200 partitions. All right, let's check it. Cool, so we have this demo CEP. Next, I'm going to uh, show you the Kafka producer. It's a fairly simple program. This is the main function. Uh, it starts by creating the Kafka producer object with uh, and give it a JSON serializer and then generate three measurements, uh, uh, blood pressure, heart rate and uh, systolic blood, pre blood uh, pressure. And uh, these, these are generated randomly. I synthesize the data from, uh, from the average distribution of uh, human beings. It's so it's a Gaussian function, uh, random function, around uh, the mean and uh, with with the mean and standard deviation. These numbers I came up with these numbers from uh, MD Calc, and then send each and then send each message inside the topic. I'm gonna go back to the console and try to run this program. So uh, it is in slash HDFS Claudia final project it's called icu.python and give it give it the uh, topic name demo cep cool so now it's it started generating 600 event per second 600 measurements per second so i'm gonna stop this for a while and uh, show you the main program i'm gonna open intellij id this is my program. Uh, these are the Maven dependencies. Uh, you can have, you can see here a Flink streaming uh, Java, Flink CEP, which is the, which, the, which is the main uh, CEP API, Apache Kafka, and uh, Flink connector to Kafka. This is the main uh, main method. So you start by getting the execution environment, and then take all the input parameters then enable checkpointing and then create the data stream the source of the data stream is a flink kafka consumer and i give it uh, a custom measurement deserializer which i'm going to show you later the next step is to partition the data according to the uh, key which is the user id in this case and then here's the pattern here's the declaration of pattern so you create, you begin with first state of type heart measurement where the calculated risk according to the value received is larger than one 
followed by a middle state of type blood pressure measurement where the calculated risk is more than two followed by a heart measurement state with a risk of three or within 10 seconds so this is how we, you create a pattern and you can have more complicated patterns next is create a pattern stream from the input data stream and the pattern we just created generate risk warnings for uh, each match it pattern so you will end up with a data stream of type stroke risk alarm next i'm gonna uh, see how it works from the JVM execution environment so I'm going to uncomment this it's going to map the uh, uh, alarms to string and print them uh, to the console so I'm going to just uh, check the configuration here we have a lot of arguments topic should be demo CEP so let's try it Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the uh, producer and you will see how messages are received. Okay, so you can see here from the background from this uh, console that I'm receiving all these events from the producer. Okay, I'm gonna stop this and go back and submit the job to Flink inside my VM. So I'm going to leave this for a while and fire up another terminal to uh, my VM. And go ahead and uh, submit my job. Uh, you see here that I call Flink to run this uh, jar and give it a topic demo CEP and the servers and the output file txt okay all right so uh, i'm gonna check from the uh, apache job dashboard and you can see here that uh, i have this running and you can see the uh, number of records received i can't see any output from here but uh, i'm gonna fire up another terminal And guess what? Um, I'm gonna tail minus f out dot txt. So here you can see uh, all the alarms that are being uh, pushed to this file. And that's pretty much it. I mean, we demonstrated how CEP works, how we streamed 600 messages per second, and then applied a pattern uh, in order to uh, detect complex events. Thank you.